Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the metric system. Our objectives are going to be to convert and estimate SI, or System International Units, also known as the metric system, and also learn to recognize fundamental and derived units. So why do we need this? Well, physics involves the study, prediction, and analysis of things that happen in the real world. And to communicate these events accurately, we need to have some sort of standard so that we can talk to somebody else about exactly what we saw in a quantitative way. Physicists have agreed to use the System International, which we also know as the metric system. The metric system is comprised of seven fundamental units, and they're all based on powers of 10 to help make the math easy, compared to the English system where we don't have a set standard. For example, there are 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, 5,280 feet in a mile, 1,760 yards in a mile. It's not a very set, easy to remember system. The metric system, all based on powers of 10. And all other units are derived from the basic seven fundamental units. The ones we're going to use most often are the meter, which we abbreviate an M to measure length, the kilogram, kg, to measure mass, how much stuff something's made up of, and the second to measure time. The fourth unit, which we won't get into until we start talking about electricity, is a unit for current, known as the ampere. Now, the meter is a measure of length similar to a yard in the English system. For measurements smaller than a meter, we use the centimeter, which is about the width of your pinky finger, a millimeter, about the width of a pencil lead, one-tenth of a centimeter, a micrometer, written micrometer, that's one millionth of a meter, or one thousandth of a millimeter, and the nanometer, which is one billionth of a meter, or one thousandth of a micrometer. For measurements larger than a meter, we typically use a kilometer. And to ballpark it, a kilometer is just a little bit more than half a mile. Now to measure mass, we talk about kilograms. And the kilogram is equivalent roughly to about 2.2 pounds in the English system, except the kilogram measures mass. For measurements smaller than a kilogram, we talk about grams, g, and milligrams, mg. And to give you an idea, one gram is about the mass of a standard paperclip. For measurements larger than a kilogram, officially we would talk about a megagram, which is 1,000 kilograms, but really folks usually use the term metric ton, which is the same thing, 1,000 kilograms. That's heavy. Now, the base unit of time is a second, so you're pretty familiar with this. But unlike the rest of the metric system, quantities of time are not always based on powers of 10. For example, longer times, one minute is 60 seconds, an hour is 60 minutes, a day is 24 hours, a year is 365 and a quarter days, and so on. But when we go to smaller units than a second, we go back to powers of 10. Things like milliseconds, a one-thousandth of a second, or microseconds, a millionth of a second, or a thousandth of a millisecond, and so on. Now, derived units, not the fundamental units, are made up of combinations of the fundamental units. For example, velocity is measured in meters per second. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. That's how fast velocity is changing. And a meter per second squared is just a fancy way of saying a change of one meter per second in velocity every second. Force, which we measure in newtons, is actually made up of a kilogram times a meter per second squared. Now, when we deal with all of these metric prefixes, our reference table in the front page in the bottom left has a table to help us out that tells us what all the prefixes mean. For example, a gigabyte of data, g gigabyte, would be 10 to the 9 bytes. A micrometer would be 10 to the minus 6 meters. And we can use this to help us convert from one unit to another. For example, if we have 2,480 meters and we want to move to kilograms, we'll follow this procedure. 2,480 meters, we're going to write our starting quantity first. Now, if we want meters to go away, We'll put meters in the denominator on the right-hand side so that when we multiply through, meters on the top and meters on the bottom will make a ratio of 1 or cancel out. 
Now we want to move to the unit kilometers, so I'll write that in the numerator on the right. Then I use my handy dandy reference table. I go look up at kilo and I find that kilo means 10 to the third. So I put that value, 10 to the third, on the side that does not have a prefix, on the base unit side. So on the meter side, I write 10 to the third because there's nothing in front of the M. On the remaining side, I put a 1. Now when I multiply through, meters on the top and bottom will cancel out. I get 2,000 times 1 divided by 10 to the third is 2.48, and the units I'm left with are kilometers. That easy. Let's try another one. Let's try 5.375 kilograms, and we're going to convert it to grams. Well, I have the unit kilograms, and I want grams, so I, want, I need kilograms to go away. I'll draw kilograms in the denominator, and I want the unit grams, so I'll put that in the top. Now, to deal with this k, this kilo, I go look on my table under kilo, and I find that kilo means 10 to the third. I write that 10 to the third on the side that does not have a, have a prefix in front of it. So in front of the g on the gram side, I put 10 to the third. On the remaining side, I put a 1. What I'm really saying is 10 to the third grams is equal to 1 kilogram. I'm multiplying by 1, so I get the same value, the same quantity, just with different units. Now when I multiply through, kilograms cancel out or make a ratio of 1, and I'm left with 5,375, and my remaining unit is grams. Now sometimes you may have to do a two-step conversion. What happens if you want to go from milliseconds to nanoseconds? We're going to follow the same basic pre procedure, we just have to add another step in there. So we'll start off with our quantity, 6.4 times 10 to the minus 6 milliseconds. If I want milliseconds to go away, I draw milliseconds in the denominator, and they will convert to seconds. Now I go to my reference table, and I find that milli means 10 to the minus 3. I fill that in on the side that does not have a prefix in front of the seconds, and I put 1 on the other side. Now my units, I'm left with seconds, but I don't want seconds. I want to go to nanoseconds, so I'll follow the same procedure again. I've got seconds in the numerator, I want those to go away to cancel out, and I'll put seconds in the denominator, and I want nanoseconds, so I'll put that in the numerator. Nano means 10 to the minus 9. I fill that in on the side without a prefix, I put 1 in the remaining side, my seconds cancel out, now I'll be left with the unit of nanoseconds. So 6.4 times 10 to the minus 6 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 10 to the minus 9 is going to give me a value of 6.4 nanoseconds. And we can do this the other direction too, and we should get the same value. 6.4 nanoseconds, we know what we should get for milliseconds, but let's do this for practice just to make sure everything works out. If we start with 6.4 nanoseconds, we want nanoseconds to go away. We'll convert to seconds first. Nano means 10 to the minus 9. I write that in on the side with no prefix. I put a 1 on the other side. And now I'm left with the units of seconds, so I need to do this again. Seconds go in the denominator. I want milliseconds. That goes in the top. Milla means 10 to the minus 3. I put that on the side with no prefix, this time in the denominator. Replace the other side with a 1. And now when I multiply through, nanoseconds cancel out. Seconds cancel out. So I have 6.4 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 10 to the minus 3. And I get a value of 6.4 times 10 to the minus 6 milliseconds. Exactly what we had started with. So it works. Now what happens if you have to do a derived unit conversion? If you have meters per second and you want to go to kilometers per hour? You follow the same basic procedure again. Let's start with our 32 meters per second, and I'm going to write that a little bit differently. I'm going to write that as 32 meters over one second. It means the same thing. 
Now, I have meters, but I want kilometers. So my first step is going to be to make the meters go away. I'll put meters in the denominator, and I want kilometers. I know kilo means 10 to the third, so I'll fill that in on the side with no prefix, put a one on the other side, and my meters will cancel out. Now I have units of kilometers per second. But I don't want per second, I want per hour. So I have seconds in the denominator, I want it to go away, I have to write seconds over here in the numerator. I don't know how many hours, how many seconds are in an hour, but I know how many seconds are in a minute. So I'll go to minutes as an intermediate step. I know one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Now my seconds will cancel out, and I'm up to kilometers per minute for my units. Still not to kilometers per hour, though. So if I want minutes to go away, I'll put minutes in the numerator over here. I'll put hour in the denominator. And I know there are 60 minutes in one hour. Now my minutes will cancel out, and if I look through my entire chain, I have kilometers in the top and hours in the bottom. That should work. So 32 times 60 times 60 divided by 10 to the 3 should give me about 115, and I'm left with units of kilometers per hour. Following the same basic process, just with a couple more steps. There are also some other multi-step conversions. For example, what happens if you need to transfer years to seconds? How many seconds are there in a year? Well, let's start with one year. If I want years to go away, I put that in the denominator. And I know that there are 365 and a quarter days in one year. So years will cancel out. But I don't want days, I want seconds. So I'll put days in the denominator, and I know that there are 24 hours in one day. All right. Days cancel out, I'm up to hours. Well, I don't want hours, I can go to minutes. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. My hours will cancel out. Now, I'm not to seconds quite yet, but if I put minutes in the denominator and seconds in the numerator, I know there are 60 seconds in one minute. Minutes cancel out. So if I take 365 and a quarter times 24 times 60 times 60, I should be left with my value in seconds. And when I do that, I put the value of about 3.16 times 10 to the seventh seconds in one year. Now let's talk a little bit about estimating values in the metric system. If we wanted to know the length of a football field in the metric system, well, I know a football field's 100 yards. And if I can recall that a meter is roughly a yard, well, then the length of a football field must be around 100 meters. Or how about estimating the mass of a student? Now, if I think of a student as being, I don't know, maybe 150 pounds, and I know that there are roughly two pounds in every kilogram, just a little bit more kilograms than 2.2 .2 pounds per kilogram, excuse me. If I take a 150 pound student, let's cut that in half. Let's say that's 75 kilograms, and then maybe a little less. So maybe around 70 kilograms, just to give you a ballpark figure. Or estimate the length of a marathon. Well, I know a marathon is 26 miles, a kilometer is just a little bit more than half a mile. So that would be somewhere in the order of 50 kilometers. And since a kilometer is just a little bit more than half a mile, we need to bring that, dial that back a little bit. Say that's, I don't know, 44 kilometers. Just a very rough estimate. Or estimate the mass of a paper clip. Pretty straightforward. A paper clip, plus or minus a little bit, is around one gram. So, next steps. Now that we've gone through this, see if you can do these conversions on your own. Go back through and see if you can solve the problems without looking at the solutions here in the video. Or go and make up and solve a few of your own conversions. See if you can convert them. And then go check it out. 
uh, Google, if you want to check that out on the internet to test your answers, will actually convert the units for you. So try doing it manually and then use the computer to check and see if you can do it correctly. For more information, you can always check out aplusphysics.com or A plus Physics, Your Guide to Regents Physics Essentials has this information and a bunch more sample problems in there as well.